Hey beauties, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over the semi-controversial new palette from Natasha Denona. And let me just tell you, I have a lot of thoughts and I'm confused for different reasons. I have a lot to say about this palette. Before I do, we're gonna look at this beauty. We're gonna talk about the shades. I'm gonna show you all of the swatches. I have three looks for you guys, including the one I have on right now. And then I've got some two cents, just two cents. <laughs> Um, all right, so this is the new Natasha Denona Retro Palette. Okay, just, just give me a second to collect my thoughts. This is the Mini Retro, and when I saw this palette, I immediately fell in love. It was something that was different to the market. You have this beautiful almost pastel like mossy green in here and then the shimmer green these beautiful blush color pinks and so i wanted a larger palette from the get-go i was like give me this in a big palette please 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 so when i heard that uh we were getting it finally. I was just like, yes, yes, yes. And I had so many people adding me or tagging me on Instagram. And I was like, oh no, this is it. And finally getting it. And then it was opened. And um, I don't see retro anything anywhere in this palette. Let me just, you know, sneak this up here. I'm gonna put them side by side so you guys can see. This is the retro and the mini retro. I don't get it, I don't get it, but I have more to say about this palette than just that. I, I just had to start off with that because I know that is what's going through most people's mind is like, like where, where does that go together? I don't understand. How did you get this palette from the mini? I don't understand. And truthfully, I don't understand either. I tried to take that out of the equation when I was doing my eye looks and just, you know, I'm going to review the palette and then give you guys some thoughts about other things. Rambling is done. Here is the retro palette. Now this kind of reminds me of the pinky shade that is in the mini retro. Then you open it up and here are the shades. It features 15 romantic burgundy and mauve shades combined with gray browns, taupes, dusty roses, and vintage pinks. It retails for 65 doll hairs. This palette has a lot of different textures in here, which I do really love. There's some creamed powders. You've got your traditional creamy mattes in here, metallics, duochrome, a lot of different things. So let me go ahead and show you guys the swatches. Glitz, a duochrome baby pink with a champagne shift. Andy, a matte taupe lilac cream powder. Jude, metallic warm taupe. Mod, a matte off-white with pink undertone. Vivian, matte light pink cream nude powder. Groove, a matte medium dark warm maroon. Opart, matte dark taupe cream to powder. Psychedelic, a warm baby pink with multicolor sparks and it's a topper shade. Go Go, matte medium warm rose cream to powder. Patty, metallic medium nude rose copper. Swing, metallic medium dark cool maroon. Nude mauve, matte medium light neutral nude. Rebellion, a matte medium burgundy cream powder. Helio, metallic taupe nude and Amara Matte Medium Cool Vintage Rosewood. There are three shades that are repeats in this palette, Nude Mauve, Helio, and Amara. We'll get into um, where those colors came from a little bit later. First, let's go ahead and get into the three different looks. This look will be last. For the first look, I'm first going to apply Go Go on a Wayne Goss 18. Going back and forth in windshield wiper motions. I did find that I had to build up this palette um, for this look anyway. And uh, I gotta admit, it's, I don't know, there's just something a little bit off. Maybe I'll have a better experience with the other shades. Grabbing a bit more, doing the same thing. 
basically the look that I did did not turn out the way that I wanted it to, like the way I expected in terms of how the shades look in the palette. So I don't know. This is it's kind of making me sad. <laughs> but we'll see. You know, this is the very first look. And I'm not going to judge it based off one look. But I will say, to me, this shade does not look as dark as it does in the palette. And I just don't normally have to build up this much with Natasha Denona. Making sure to really blend this into the transition area, getting the outer portion as well. Same shade on a Wayne Goss number 18. Okay, do you see how little pigment just came off? It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. So I'm going to build up on the lower lash line as well. Amara on a MAC 221. Taking this directly into the crease. This shade I found to work really nicely. It's nice and pigmented. This is the matte formula though. Softly blending this upward. I think this shade is great. Same shade on a refer number three, applying this closer to the lash line, on the lower lash line. Wayne Goss number 18 and Patty, applying this on the outer half of the lid. Going in with Medallion on a MAC 221, I am going to deepen up outer portion of the lid. Again, this is going to take me a few layers. I feel like this can get muddy very easily if you're not careful. So, yeah, just FYI. Refer 21, Patty, placing this on the front portion of the lid. Using the same brush, I'm grabbing Glitz and popping that right over the top. Mod Refer 21. This is a very pigmented white, so be careful. I am blending this right underneath my brow arch and then to kind of clean up the edges of the other shades. If you can see on this eye how much it has faded already in comparison to this eye, I just wanted to point that out, but I'm taking that white and putting it on my inner corner as well. Going in with Opart on a refer number three using this wet. I am going to create a liner and then I will go add on inner rim liner and mascara. For the next look, I'm starting off with Nude Mauve on a Zoeva 227. Starting by tapping on the outer corner. And then I'm going to be working this into my crease. Back and forth windshield wiper motions. Picked up some more product, again starting on the outer corner. And then this time I'm going to start working upward. Same shade on a Sonia G Soft Definer. I'm going to buff this right underneath the lower lash line. Refer 14 and Andy. I really like this shade. I'm putting it in my crease. Kind of gives it this purple hue. And I kind of, I did this a little backwards, but I did it on purpose kind of like evens things out and it has that beautiful lavender mauve. It's just so pretty and I love the creamy texture of it. 
Just making sure to get that blended out. I don't want to completely cover up the lash shade, but I want to bring it upward just a little bit. Refer 14 and Opart. Start tapping this on the outer portion of the lid. Adding in some definition into the crease about three quarters of the way in, building it up a little bit more. I also found that this shade worked very easily. Taking that shade on a refer number three, going right along the lower lash line. Refer 21 and Jude. This was the shade that I thought could possibly have a green undertone, but it doesn't. I'm taking this all over the front of the lid and lightly tapping over the edge of the last shade. Again, Refer 21 in the shade Mod, right under the brow bone, and then tiny little circular motions right around the edge of the shadow that helps to give a cleaner blend. Refer 3 and Groove. I'm going to use this shade as my liner. Then I'm going to take a little bit of that and kind of mix it in on the lower lash line. Bristles Beauty PO6 RF and Psychedelic. Placing this on the inner corner. And then I'm going to go add on inner rim liner and mascara. For today's look, I'm starting off with the shade Swing on a Zoeva 227. I'm going to go directly into the crease, back and forth windshield wiper motions, making sure I get all the way to the inner corner and outer corner. Then I'm going to bring the excess on the lid. I will be taking another brush and making sure it's a little bit more opaque, but I want to do that before I start working the shade upward so that I don't have too much product on my brush and I can get it to be a little bit softer up in the transition area. I'm going to go in once more, do the same thing. And then going upward, I'm adding instead of trying to take away because this is a deeper shade. It blends out very nicely though, evenly. It's nice and pigmented. I have no problems with this shade. Same shade, Zoeva 234. I'm just going to add some more to the lid with a non fluffy brush. Just making sure it's nice and even. I'll be putting another shade on top of this. And then I'm also going to run this right along the lower lash line with a refer number three. Vivian on a Wayne Goss number 19. I'm going to lightly take this around the edges and blend them out with this shade. Using very light pressure and circular motions. Refer 21 and Glitz. I'm going to highlight the brow arch. Builder Pro in the shade Psychedelic. I'm going to start pressing this on the lid, right over top of Swing. I do have to build this up to get the opacity that I want out of it and the sparkle that I want. So I dip in several times. And I'm also pushing this up into my crease so that I don't have like a harsh line. Back in with the refer number three in the shade Swing. I'm applying this to my top lash line as liner, and then I'm gonna go add on interim liner and mascara to finish off the look. 
All right, it is time for my two cents. <laughs> Some of you guys might not care, and that is totally cool. First, just the palette in of itself, taking the retro out of it completely. I think this is a very beautiful palette. I like the colors that are in here. It is very romantic. I do wish that the three shades in here that are repeats had been just all new shades, but they do work well in this palette. Now, I'm a little confused about how I feel about this palette in terms of quality. Not in terms of, like, I know exactly how I feel about it being the retro palette, but when it comes to the actual textures, I feel like there's something just slightly off. I am not saying that this is a bad palette. I'm not saying that it doesn't work well or that I got bad looks out of it. I'm saying that some of the shades just felt a little off, like the metallics were slightly thinner still beautiful and that could be beneficial to some people that have an issue with like that crepiness type of look you can get with some thicker metallics but I did find that the metallics went on well and I could definitely build them up but they're just a little bit thinner they don't need to be built up they are, look gorgeous but they are just slightly thinner than what I am used to and I feel like I know Natasha Denona's palettes pretty well you might not notice that if you don't have a lot of the, her palettes. You may notice it. I don't know. I I have been going back and forth and I've been playing with them and I'm like swatching them. I'm like, is it in my head? I'm not sure. So that's kind of where a little bit of the confusion comes into play because I, I just, I felt a difference. Not bad, just not what I am used to. So I wanted to make a note of that. And if anybody else feels the same way, if you have this palette, please let me know. Cause I'm, I'm just a little, I just don't know what to think about that. This topper shade right here, I wish I could get a little more out of. I can definitely get really close to the camera, right up against these lights and you'll see the sparkle. But do you see it as much further away and I'm not even, I'm probably three feet from my camera and I still have the lights. I feel like I had to build this one up, you know, for a topper shade, I just, I wanted it to be a little bit more sparkly. It's beautiful and if you go in with your finger, it does add a little bit more, but it does fade. I have to say it does fade. If you have the Pat McGrath uh, artistry wand, go in with that first. I did that one day while I was just playing with it and it held onto it so much better. But just applied on top of a shadow or on top of the lid on just unset eyes, it holds on but it does fade. It does fade throughout the day. There was one look, the more maroon look that I did where the outer corner, uh, I think it was this eye, it had started to get patchy right here. I noticed it and it drove me nuts <laughs> the entire time I had filmed another video. I, you know, I was doing my editing and I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, it's driving me batty. I'm just like, I cannot stop looking at it. So I will say that I had, did have some, some fading and some patchiness issues, but nothing major. Overall, I would recommend this palette. I do think it is beautiful and I like like the berry tones and then these like terracotta rosy, like they're not too pink. I know a lot of people are over the pink shades. This is not too pink. It looks more pink I think in pictures than what it does in real life. It's definitely like a fall palette, a romantic fall palette. That is how I would describe it. These shades right here I think are just so, so, so beautiful. All right, so I like this palette. I'm not in love with it, but I do like it. There's my two cents on that. Now, I kind of feel like this might be a little bit of a money grab. And hear me out, because I absolutely love Natasha Denona. I've gotten PR from her. I've been so grateful to have that. No, I did buy this myself. I am such a fan of her shadows. There's been some palettes that have been duds, but overall, I really, 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 really like her makeup, especially her eyeshadows. 
but this to me feels like a money grab. And the reason why I'm saying that is because I know there was a lot, a lot of demand to have a retro palette, to have the larger version of this. I know it because I saw it all over Instagram. I saw people even tagging me, making their comments. And I wonder if this was not a palette that was already in production, this is not this is not truthful this is not confirmed in any way shape or form this is my thought i feel like this was already in production and i feel like she knew that the retro name would sell i feel like she hadn't done it yet and instead of just waiting and making it later she slapped the retro name on here because I don't see it at all. There is nothing about this palette that makes me think retro. I was kind of hoping that maybe it would because this shade right here, which is actually more of a silvery shade, a gray, it's beautiful. In the pictures of the swatches, it looked like it might have like a hint of green, but like for it to be a retro palette, where's the green? Where is the green? I would have been completely fine with these shades if there were greens and, and whatnot in here, but they're not, they're not there. And then to further confirm that thought process for me, finding out that the three shades in here that are repeats are actually in the Lila palette. This one right here, Helio, Nude Mauve, and Amara. So I don't see how you <laughs> would take shades from this palette and put them in this palette, the retro palette, and not call it maybe an extension of the Lila or even the extension of the Love, which I know we have the Mini Love as well as the Love palette. So let me show you these. This is the Love, and then this is the Mini Love. I could see having a less pink and purple option for like Valentine's Day and doing a second one, making it the Love 2. If you kind of try to block out this pink, I see more of these shades in this palette. And I also see just a little bit more of the Zendo because there's that one like shimmery kind of green in there, but it's not as prominent as it is in the mini retro. Like that green in there is just so beautiful and it stands out. Now on this one, I feel like I can see a little bit more consistency with the shades as well. So it bothers me because I truly do feel like it was just, the name was just slapped on this palette. That's just how I feel about it. Like I said, that is not something that was confirmed that I could ever prove or anything like that. It's just a little conspiracy in my head. All right, so that is it. That is it for my more than two cents. Again, please let me know if anybody else feels like there's a slight difference in this palette. I still say that I would recommend this. I do like this palette. I don't love it. I don't love it like I do a lot of her other palettes, but I do like it and I will be using this palette. So just let me know. And also, if you had a favorite look, please mention it in the comment section down below. But that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye guys.